Today I've got a nice little functional equation problem. This comes from the BMO 2009 slash 2010. In fact, this is BMO 1. And I really like this problem because it's pretty straightforward if you kind of use the correct technique. So if you're unfamiliar with how to solve these problems, I suggest this is probably a good video because it kind of goes over the basic techniques to solving functional equation problems. Let's have a look. We want to find all functions f defined on the real numbers and taking real values, which satisfies uh, or satisfy the equation f of x times f of y equals f of x plus y plus xy for all real numbers x and y. Okay, let's dive in. So we've got f, which is a function from the reals to the reals, and it satisfies this equation here. And the idea to solving this is what we want to do is firstly identify some crucial properties about f. So perhaps what f is at certain individual values and kind of go from there. So a natural thing to do is plug in a specific value of x or plug in a specific value of y. And here it actually doesn't really matter. We can see there's some symmetry in x and y. If I swap x and y, the equation stays exactly the same. Um, so because I've got an x, y term here, I'm very tempted to plug in x is 0 because that will make this term become irrelevant. And so I'm going to set x equals 0 and leave y as arbitrary for the time being. And if I do that, I get f of 0 times f of y equals f of y. And this is true for all real numbers y. And now this gives two possibilities here. So if I maybe bring everything to one side and factor out an f of y, I get 1 minus f of 0 multiplied by f of y equals 0. And again, this is true for all real numbers y. And so there's two possibilities here. Either f of y is 0 for every single real number y, or f of 0 equals 1. And it turns out that this first case of f of y equaling 0 is impossible, because if f was the constant 0 function, we would have an issue here, because that would mean that if I just substitute that back into the equation, I get 0 equals 0 plus xy for all real numbers x and y. But obviously that's not true. If I just choose x and y to be two positive real numbers, x times y will be positive and this equation will break. So in fact it's impossible for f to be 0 for every single real number y, so that's not true. And thus we must have that f of 0 is 1. Perfect, we've worked out a property of our function f. So this is a necessary uh, property for our function f to satisfy this equation up here. Of course no, it's not a sufficient condition. What we need to do is now explore a little bit further, but we're going to use the fact that we've just found that f of 0 is 1. So we want to think, how could we get an f of 0 back into this equation here? Well, we could just make x or y 0, but we've kind of already exhausted that. The other thing we could do is make x plus y equal 0. So what happens if we make y equal negative x? Well, if we do this, we get f of x multiplied by f of negative x equals f of 0 which we've just worked out is 1, and then x times minus x is minus x squared, like so. So f of x and f of one, uh, minus x are equal to 1 minus x squared. And this is kind of nice. So this tells us that if f is a function that satisfies this equation up here, we must have f of x times f of minus x equals 1 minus x squared. And again, we're going to use this property that 0 is a very nice number. In fact, 0, I normally say, is a mathematician's favourite number because it has so many nice properties. And so if we can make this right-hand side here 0, well, then we can determine that one of these two terms on the left-hand side must be 0. So if I set x equal to 1 in this equation, or equally, I could make it minus 1, doesn't actually matter, f of 1 oops, times f of minus 1 must equal 0. And so this gives me two possible cases, either f of 1 is 0 or f of minus 1 is 0. So let's investigate what happens if f of 1 is 0. Well, if f of 1 is 0, what I can do is just substitute 1 back into this equation here. So let y equal 1. And in doing so, I get f of x times f of 1 equals f of x plus 1 plus x times 1. And because f of 1, we're assuming here is 0, I get that f of x plus 1 equals negative x. Or in other words, f of x, if I just replace, maybe let me make it a bit clearer, if I replace the x plus 1 with t, I get that this is negative of t minus 1. So just replace, because this equation here is true for all real numbers x, I can just replace x with 
t minus 1, and I get this thing here, which is the same as 1 minus t. And so this is a contender for a solution to this uh, functional equation that we have at the start. Now, of course, we still need to verify that it does indeed satisfy this. It turns out it does, but we'll just check that at the end. But we found a contender solution. So if we have the case where f of 1 is 0, we get the function f of t is 1 minus t. And we can get something similar if we assume f of minus 1 is 0. So if we assume f of minus 1 is 0, and we just plug in y equals negative 1 this time, we get f of x times f of minus 1, which is 0, equals f of x minus 1 minus x, like so. And if I rearrange this, I get f of x minus 1 equals x. And so again, replacing x minus 1 with t, I get f of t is x plus 1. Like, oh, sorry, t plus 1, sorry. And so this gives me another contender solution to this. So essentially, I have that f of t is either 1 minus t or 1 plus t. And all we need to do is verify that these are indeed sufficient as well. We've shown that these are necessary, as in that these, you know, if f of x is a solution to this functional equation, it must be one of these two guys. We now just need to check that both of these are valid solutions. It's a bit like when you're solving um, a problem and you get x is 5 plus or minus 7 or whatever, and you just need to check that both those numbers are indeed valid solutions for x. And that's not too difficult. All we've got to do is substitute, substitute both of these back into this equation up here. So I'm going to kind of be a bit lazy and do, or maybe lazy, maybe efficient, depending on how you describe it. I'm just going to say f of x equals 1 plus or minus x, and just be very careful about these one, the plus and the minus here. So if I just substitute that back into this, I get 1 plus or minus x times 1 plus or minus y equals 1 plus or minus x plus y plus xy. And I just need to verify that this, is, this equation is true for all real values x and y. Well, this is true if and only if. Well, if I expand this here, I get 1, then plus or minus y, plus or minus x, and then plus or minus x times plus or minus y. That's always going to be plus xy. So even if it's plus and plus, that's positive times positive is positive. Negative times negative is also positive. So I get this. And now we can kind of clearly see that this is true. If I expanding this, I get the same thing on both sides. And so both of these indeed are valid solutions. And so there are only two functions f that satisfy this equation, namely f of x is 1 plus x and f of x is 1 minus x. And that's the idea. That's how you want to approach these sorts of problems. There are lots of other tricks that you can use with functional equation problems, but essentially the kind of basic level tricks are just to substitute in values of x and y so you can get some necessary conditions about f and then use zero to your advantage, essentially.